All right, welcome back. Um, there was a question while we were on break uh, that dealt with title searches, and I didn't answer the question, but thanks, Bob, because we're actually going to talk about that right now. Uh, a title search, any company that's issued title, ins uh, title insurance must perform a title search of the real estate in conjunction with a mortgage that is secured by that real estate, unless that mortgage is not more than $50,000 and it's subordinate to a prior mortgage, which means like a second. Um, and then obviously if the mortgage is not a reverse mortgage. So let's go back and talk about that. First of all, do we all know what a title search is, right? Raise your hand. Title search is a search of the public records uh, for a, based on a tax ID number or a parcel ID number or an address um, to tell what is, so that they can see all the liens that have been placed upon the property. Under Indiana rule, there dash 21, I'm not going to go through it, a company that is I issuing a insurance policy has to do a title search unless that title is not more than $50,000 or unless the lien or mortgage is not more than 50 grand. This is one of the reasons why you see a lot of bankers not do uh mortgages under 50. Uh, that's one of the reasons why there's a whole bunch of other reasons why um or if the or and i should say not and and it's subordinate to a prior mortgage yeah dave subordinate means uh under like a second or a third like a home equity line of credit like uh you know you got a boss and his subordinates a subordinate is a person below the boss so a subordinate mortgage would be a second mortgage. So if someone is going to get a twenty or thirty thousand dollar home equity line of credit because they want to do something, uh, the title company is not required under this law to actually do a title search. Now I will tell you, most of them do anyway because it's easier than maybe fighting off uh, possible issues later. Uh, <clears throat> If the mortgage is not a reverse mortgage, or if the mortgage is not a reverse mortgage. If it's a reverse mortgage, then once again, title search is applied. So there is a requirement by the state to do title searches on most any of those. Once again, you can see right out of the gate, somebody does a first lien, okay? It's not subordinate, so it has a title search. Um, if the mortgage is, you know, 1.8 million or 400,000, it's more than 50 grand, it has to do a title search. Um, if it's not a reverse mortgage, it has to do a title search. So you can see that there are a lot of requirements for the title search uh, process inside of the state. Now, one other section I want to talk about right now is this thing called the CPL. The CPL is a closing protection letter. No, the closing protection letter is a letter that is written by the title company to the lender okay hold on we'll get to it if it's a residential real estate transaction okay so it's residential right in which the title policy is issued and the company issuing the policy will be the closing agent got it so if a title company is issuing a policy and they are the closing company they shall issue a closing protection letter to the lender, to the borrower, i.e. the buyer and the seller of the property. The company can charge a fee for receiving the protection letter or charging for giving the protection letter and the amount of the fee must be approved by the commissioner. Um, it's not subject to agreement and it's not subject to debate. Um, so what a protection letter basically is, is protecting that lender that the insurance company, the title company is authorizing that they did this properly and that they have protection, they being that lender has protection. If it's a non-residential transaction, say a commercial, in which the title company was issued and, uh, and the company will also be the closing agent, the company may issue a closing protection letter notice the first one says shall this one says may okay 
A closing protection letter must indemnify the party to which the closing protection letter is issued against any loss of settlement funds that result from the following of the acts of the company that issued the protection letter. Got it? Clear as mud. Okay, let's go through that. The CPL is a letter from the title company holding the other companies not liable, that means indemnify them, against any loss of the funds that were used at closing as long as those funds weren't theft or misappropriation in connection with the transaction um, that or a misappropriation relates to the status of the title, the validity of the title, the enforcement, uh, any of the liens or anything like that. Failure to comply with this, uh, with, the, with the failure with to comply with the closing instructions. Say the lender has a closing instruction that, I don't know, let's make up something that's asinine but easily understandable, that they want the buyer to close wearing a blue turtleneck. And the title company just says, ah, I don't understand that, that makes no sense, wear, wear whatever you want. Then they did not comply with the closing instructions issued to them by the lender. All right. Now that's asinine because the failure to comply has to do with the status of the title or the validity of the title. Uh, and the closing letter has to be issued to those lenders. All right. You got it. So it's just a letter saying, yes, Mr. Lender, we followed the instructions that you gave us. Uh, all of the funds were used exactly for what we told you they were going to be used for. We didn't misappropriate any of the funds. We didn't lie about the condition of the title. And this letter is an authorization saying that the title policy that we wrote actually is exactly the one that should be written. And the closing agent didn't do any hanky panky stuff with the uh, money during the closing, the settlement fund. Okay.